I have no proof, of course. Honest men seldom have when it comes to the mob, because the total animal remains legally mythical. Its sinister web spreads quietly, unseen, achieving power that rivals the government's and passes it in some areas. It succeeds because it preys upon the greed of the wheelers and dealers, the influence peddlers, the red tape cutters and unofficial lobbyists. It plays also upon our fears and on our suspicions of one another. And if exposure threatens, it just melts away. Now what do we, the people, reap from all this? If they can elect a mayor, they can also elect a governor. They may even elect a president, and he won't know it until they come to collect the bill. And if that possibility seems far-fetched, consider this. If George Orwell's unbelievable society should finally come, Big Brother may turn out to be the mob. And what did the Corps of Engineers estimate the additional cost to the taxpayers to be if they made this little old last-minute backfield shift? $32 million. Is that all? Just another $32 million. Of course, you're forgetting the extra money it'll cost the state to hold a special election after you're impeached. You're in good form today, Jim. It's a pity to waste all that rhetoric on an audience of one. Now, look, Hayes. This is the most important project our state's had since the New Deal. You don't really want to foul it up, do you? No, I just think it could use some alterations. Because 76 Indians balance out 4 million other people. You haven't read the treaty. I've read 50 treaties just like it. They've never stopped this country before. Then they should have. At least long enough to make us think things over. What are you going to ask Rennick to do? Reopen the hearing. But Hayes, the bulldozers are on the site. I'm talking about moving them 15 miles. And $32 million. Last year, we spent $70 billion on what some people call our national integrity. I knew you'd find a way to get us into the Pentagon. Now look, let's march right out of there again and back to the point. You don't see the analogy? No, and neither do you. You're grabbing at straws because you've been hurt and moved and you're upset. Well, I know it's not an act. Maybe I moved a little myself. Then don't you think it's time we did something? These people whose land we stole? Bought. Yes, bought. But I think we have to start seeing those purchases for what they really were, down payments. Our grandfathers never settled their debt with the Indians. Now we have to do something about it, don't we? Isn't it part of the Jews we owe? Just as we're piling up debts for our kids and poverty and pollution, overpopulation. And someday they're going to have to do something about them. It's the way history moves along, isn't it? History is bunk, Henry Ford. I got work to do, Hayes Stowe. It should not be necessary to add that it is our profound conviction that arrest and trial is the American way. Bayonets and bullets are not acceptable in this country. If students or anybody else break the law, they must be prosecuted, but not shot. Minimum force is the standard which must be applied. Those who exceed this standard with guns or in any other way, under whatever badge of authority, must answer for the consequences. So, fourth and finally, as regards the shooting of the students, we recommend that a grand jury be impaneled at once for the specific purpose of determining where the culpability in this shooting lies. For we are convinced that on the basis of the testimony here compiled, there is a probability that in the deaths of Sidney Winkler and Mary Sloan and the wounding of four other students Excessive force was applied, and sufficient restraint was not exercised. 
However, guilt under our system can only be determined in accordance with judicial process. It is therefore the conclusion of this commission that if men in positions of responsibility and authority react in extreme fashion to a situation they do not properly investigate, setting in motion deadly forces which cannot be recalled, they must answer in the courts. If men in positions of responsibility and authority dangerously aggravate a difficult situation and exceed all bounds of their authority, they must answer in the courts. If men in positions of authority and responsibility act, perhaps under provocation, but far in excess of the minimum force which the situation requires, they must answer in the courts. We do therefore affirm that we will this day transmit to the Attorney General all documentary and physical evidence and all oral and written testimony here compiled together with this Commission's unanimous recommendation to the Attorney General that he immediately and without delay place before such grand jury all aforementioned evidence with a view toward returning such criminal indictments as it may deem proper and necessary against those it holds culpable. We do further recommend that the following men be summoned as material witnesses before such grand jury. One. George A. Keller, governor of this state. Two, General Harry T. Collins, Jr., commanding officer, 963rd unit, the guard. Three, Lieutenant Carrie Anthony Caffey, 963rd unit, the guard. Four, the men of the full and entire C squad 963rd unit, the guard, and such other witnesses as may be considered appropriate. So do we affirm. Arthur? Agreed. Ben? And I have nothing to add.